Do you remember the 2007 VMAs? Because they were a hot mess. I have diarrhea. So in my last video, when I talked about the 2018 Choice Awards, I asked you guys, what should I watch next? And some of you mentioned the VMAs, and I instantly thought 2007 has to go first because it was a mess. So let's get right into it. So as everybody knows, the show infamously started with Britney performing Gimme More. It was meant to be her big comeback. I love Britney Spears, but I think we all have to admit that this was a mess. To be fair though, the rehearsal footage has been released, and from Britney's rehearsal, it's pretty much identical to the performance that she gave. It's more just kind of the energy that she gives in the performance makes it a little not good. Rihanna had to even defend herself because people accused her of laughing at Britney while she was performing, and so Rihanna had to say, no, I was just laughing at the dancer that was like, on the pole. Sarah Silverman comes out. She is an insult comic, so she does a quick routine. Sarah makes several jokes about Britney. 25 years old, and she's already accomplished everything she's gonna accomplish in her life. Adam Levine laughs. I knew I didn't like you. I just didn't have a reason, and now I have one. And you know who doesn't laugh? Jennifer Garner. Queen support queens. Sarah then makes another joke about Britney, and you hear someone in the audience say, You're ugly. <laughs> Mess. Sarah then moves on to her second punching bag, Paris Hilton. She basically makes a long-winded joke about Paris being a Paris does not laugh. We then move on to Alicia Keys that was literally in the trenches. She starts off by saying, This show is only airing one time right now, no reruns. Um, explain this video, babes. Alicia then gives a shout out to Jennifer Hunson. We have Jennifer Hunson looking beautiful over there, you know? Alicia then has a painfully awkward moment where the audience chooses not to cheer. We have a beautiful crowd out here tonight. Right? Alicia then fills us in that throughout the night, in between ad breaks going in and out, we will be transported to fantasy suites that will be showcasing concerts in hotel suites at the Palms, including Kanye West, Justin Timberlake and Timberland, Fall Out Boy and the Foo Fighters. Alicia then says, let's check out the Fall Out Boy concert right now. What's going on up there? His mic does not work. She is so stressed right now. She is thinking, who on my team do I need to fire for making me do this? Nicole Scherzingberger. Nicole Scherzingberger. And E then come out to present Monster Single of the Year. Why is Nicole looking at us like that though? Oh, don't make that face. Ooh, ooh. The nominees were Girlfriend by Avril Lavigne. Thanks for the Memories by Fall Out Boy. Umbrella by Rihanna. Lip Gloss by Little Mama. This Is Why I'm Hot by Mims. Hey There Delilah by The Plain White Tees. Party Like a Rockstar by The Shop Boys, Home by Daughtry, Buy You a Drank by T-Pain, And The Way I Are by Timberland. This is too many nominees. However, all of these songs are super iconic and 2007 gave us amazing music. So every single song that is talked about at the VMAs or performed, I've put into a Spotify playlist that you can go listen to. The link is in the bio. Umbrella wins the award. Well deserved. That song will still be listened to in 100 years. It is a classic. However, when they announced that Umbrella won, I have no idea what Nicole is trying to say. Hey. My Rihanna featuring yeah. Jay-Z Umbrella. When Rihanna is walking up to the stage to accept the award, there's a shot of Little Mama looking in the crowd all proud like. She's not Little Mama, she is Proud Mama. In between the first ad break, Kanye West performs Stronger, and Akon performs Smack That, the jazz edition with Mark Ronson. Bill Hader and Seth Rogen then tell us to waste our money by texting in to vote for the best new artist. Oh hey there! And Aziz Ansari photobomb. The nominees for best new artist are Amy Winehouse, Lily Allen, Gym Class Heroes, Carrie Underwood, and Peter Bjorn and John. Jennifer Hudson and Robin Thicke then come out to present the award for Quadruple Threat. Jennifer Hudson is unclear on when to start talking so you can hear her whisper into the microphone. Oh. <laughs> We know how hard- The nominees for Quadruple Threat are Beyonce, Bono, Justin Timberlake, Jay-Z, and Kanye West. Now what confuses me is that they tell us why each nominee is a Quadruple Threat, and for a majority of them, one of the reasons is clothing line. I mean, is this a threat? 
I mean, besides it being a literal threat to fashion, triple threat is enough. Justin Timberlake wins and takes the opportunity to tell MTV to play more music videos and less original programming. We will come back to this later. Before we enter the next ad break, Fall Out Boy performs thanks for the memories and at the end, they start trashing the joint like rock stars. But then Pete Wentz throws his guitar into the audience and I'm actually concerned about the well-being of that crowd. Is everyone okay? Coming back from the ad break, the Foo Fighters perform The Pretender. 50 Cent and Kanye West then both come out to present the award for most earth-shattering collaboration and this is wild for 2007. For those that do not know, Kanye and 50 Cent released their album in the same week and 50 Cent placed a bet saying that he would outsell Kanye. He didn't. Kanye West gets up on his tippy toes, but I am sure that this whole thing is just a bit. I think the fact that he went up on his tippy toes implies that there's actually no beef. The nominees for most earth-shattering collaboration was Akon with Eminem, Beyonce and Shakira, Gwen Stefani and Akon, Justin Timberlake with Timberland, and U2 with Green Day. The winner is Beyonce and Shakira for Beautiful Liar, Bop, in between the ad break, Adam Levine performs a wake up call with Mark Ronson and the lady behind him is vibing. And then coming back from the ad break, T.I. performs big things poppin' do it. Chris Brown then performs and does a dip. And then Rihanna comes out as a surprise guest to perform Umbrella. Ashanti is also in the audience scene singing along to Umbrella. Queen support queens. For the first time watching one of these award shows, I thought that this VMAs was actually live because of so many awkward pauses. But during the performance, Rihanna randomly disappears from the stage and Chris Brown appears back at the front of the stage. It makes absolutely no sense if it was live. They broke the illusion. Between the next ad break, Wale performs Wale Dance and Soldier Boy performs Crank That. <laughs> Once again, Bill Hader and Seth Rogen tell us again to waste our money to vote for best new artists, and Bill Hader kind of breaks character. Your potential losers are... Mess. The cast of Hills then come out to present Male Artist of the Year. The nominees are Akon, Robin Thicke, T.I., Justin Timberlake, and Kanye West. Justin Timberlake wins. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where messy Justin thrived because he had the nerve once again to tell MTV to play more music videos and less shows like The Simpsons and reality television right in front of the cast of The Hills that just gave him the award. Like I said, play more damn videos. We don't, we don't want to see uh, The Simpsons on reality television. Play more videos. Mess. Lauren Conrad later did an interview and said, I've always loved Justin and he was a disappointment at the VMAs. Whitney and I presented him with an award. We were so excited and he wouldn't even take the award from us. Then he went up on the microphone and insulted reality television on MTV. We were standing up there smiling and I felt so stupid. I feel kind of bad for them. It's not their fault that people watch their show. By me being the maestro. Between the next ad breaks, CeeLo Green and the Foo Fighters do a cover of Darling Nikki by Prince, and it's kind of better than the original, in my opinion. And then coming back from the ad break, 50 Cent, Justin Timberlake, and Timberland perform AO Technology. Shia LaBeouf then comes out on stage to reveal the name of the next Indiana Jones movie that he will be in, but he props it up by saying, I've been sworn to secrecy, but to heck with it, I'll tell you guys. Mm -mm. Shia then presented Female Artist of the Year. The nominees were Beyonce, Fergie, Nelly Furtado, Rihanna, and Amy Winehouse. Now, who do you think won? Because the crowd had some opinions. Okay, so the Female Artist of the Year is... <laughs> Fergie. And so Fergie won, but she was not at the show, so Ludacris was meant to accept her award on her behalf. Fergie's not here, so here comes Ludacris. But he didn't go up to accept the award. Ludacris? Poor Fergie, honestly, like she lost out on her moment. Messiness incoming, messiness incoming. So Pamela Anderson comes onto a stage and she's super frazzled and confused and doesn't know what to do. And you can hear her on her mic saying, And then the announcer interrupts her to say, Please welcome uh, our favorite showgirl, 
Pamela Anderson. So my best guess is the person sitting next to Pamela was like, quickly, it's your turn, get up, get up, get up on stage. And she's like, no, 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 not yet. I've got to wait for the announcer. They're like, no, 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 just go, 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 go. So I blame whoever was sitting next to Pamela. She was set up. Pamela then presents Kanye West and T-Pain performing Good Life in his fantasy suite. And what's really cool about these fantasy suites is that you get like these aerial shots of people partying from the balcony. It seems like a lit place. Coming back from the ad break, Fall Out Boy performed This Ain't a Scene. It's an arms race with the gym class hero Brendan Urie from Panic at the Disco and Tiger. It's the r r r r remix and the girl in the gold dress is given some cool dance moves. Between the ad break, the Foo Fighters perform Holiday in Cambodia and coming back from the ad breaks, Fall Out Boy perform Shut Up and Drive with Rihanna. <laughs> Such a good remix, she's a rock chick. So Nelly is about to start talking and then the announcer interrupts him to talk over him. Please welcome Nelly. Check it out. I feel like the announcer needs to be fired, but maybe the announcer is like an AI robot. I'm not completely sure. Nelly introduces Alicia Keys performing No One. This one guy in the audience thought he was sly trying to take a photo. You are not sly, mister. I love all of the people in the audience taking photos with actual cameras, not phones. It was 2007. Camera phones weren't that hot yet. Okay, so let's talk about the drama about this performance. So while Alicia Keys is performing No One, Kid Rock and Tommy Lee get into a brawl. Allegedly, the fight was over Pamela Anderson because both Kid Rock and Tommy Lee are the ex-husbands of Pamela Anderson, but it is unclear why they were fighting. It was reported that Kid Rock just walked past Tommy Lee and sucker punched him in the head, and then it led to chaos, and they both got kicked out. It's getting weird. And then later on in the night when Jamie Foxx comes out to present, he says, And stop all of this white-on-white -white crime right now. Between the next ad break, Kanye and Common perform Driving Me Wild, and coming back from the ad break, Jim Class Heroes perform Clothes Off featuring Patrick Stump. As I mentioned earlier, Jamie Foxx comes out to present with Jennifer Garner. Jamie Foxx gives a shout out to Kanye's album and the crowd is crickets. <laughs> Going to buy the Kanye West CD right now. Okay, I didn't get nothing for that, Kanye. So Jamie Foxx is incredibly frazzled and he's not saying anything that he was meant to say so he literally just passes it to Jennifer Garner being like, now let's hear from Jennifer. Anything, we just go, go to Jennifer Garner before we say anything else. And Jennifer, waiting on Jamie to say his line first that he did not say she does not know what to do now, she's like, uh, 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 it's getting weird. Mess. But Jennifer Garner, as a professional, she tries to get the show back on track and right as she's about to do that, Jamie Foxx starts beatboxing and goes, catwalk. <laughs> And Jennifer tries to be the best sport she can about it while also being incredibly confused and stressed and frazzled. We finally get to find out that they are presenting the Best New Artist Award that everyone has been wasting their tax money voting for. Once again, Jamie Foxx goes off script and Jennifer is in the trenches trying to get a hold of the situation. I see you, Diddy. <laughs> Them. Stop talking while I'm up here. Jamie. But then, oh no, Jennifer Garner messes up as well. I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! So the award is for Best New Artist, but Jennifer Garner calls it The Best New Group. That automatically spoils that Amy Winehouse, Lily Allen, and Carrie Underwood do not win. What about you? Jim Class. Fallout. So Jennifer Garner tells us that Jim Class. Fallout wins the award, which is the surprise writing candidate for the merger of Gym Class Heroes and Fallout Boy. Congrats! When the camera goes to the Gym Class Heroes celebrating, the mic cannot reach them to accept the award, so they just cut to 50 Cent performing in the club. Caitlin Upton from the viral Miss Teen USA competition video Such as. comes out to give a hilarious speech. Your favorite I can't tell if she's being completely ironic reading the teleprompter like she is talking like this, but I'm gonna give her the benefit of a doubt and say that she knew exactly what she was doing. Over here in the South America, we should help the Iran, the Pakistan, and everywhere like such as the Wu-Tang Clan, <laughs> so we can better our future, such as. She redeemed herself, and that was a truly iconic speech, such as. Fun fact, she also made an appearance in Weezer's Pork and Beans music video, which was all about early internet memes. 
between the next ad break, Valerie featuring Amy Winehouse plays, and then Stop Me featuring Daniel Merriweather is performed. Mary J. Blige then comes out to present Dr. Dre. He is the most incredible in in producer of our time. While she is talking, the next episode starts playing. He gave birth. It's just weird timing. It's getting weird. And during her speech, she says that Dr. Dre introduced the world to NWA, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, and 50 Cent. 50 Cent. So Dr. Dre finally comes out to accept his award. Oh, wait. No. He doesn't get an award. He just comes out to present video of the year. Let's check out the nominees for video of the year. So Mary J. Blige was the presenter for the presenter. The nominees for video of the year was Beyonce's Irreplaceable, Justice's Dance, Rihanna's Umbrella, Justin Timberlake's What Goes Around Comes Around, Kanye West's Stronger, and Amy Winehouse's Rehab. Rihanna featuring Jay-Z. Then another mess happens. So Diddy was meant to present the next segment with Kid Rock. Y'all know we gotta keep this thing going. I'm supposed to be up here with my man Kid Rock. But because Kid Rock got into the fight with Tommy Lee, he was kicked out. So they had to last minute replace him with Young Jock. You know, we gotta stop the violence in rock and roll. Um. <laughs> Leading into the final ad break, Master Don perform Colony of Birchman. And then the show ends with a performance with Nelly Furtado, Justin Timberlake in Timberland. Nelly starts off performing Do It. Timbaland then performs The Way I Are with Kerry Hilson, and then Justin performs Love Stoned, and Justin fixes his wedgie. It then finally ends with all of them performing Give It To Me. Hey. Big, 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 big bop. Now, even though this performance was amazing, this had Kanye West so Kanye West was mad for several reasons. One was being snubbed for several awards, but it was mainly due to the fact that he was not given a main stage performance set. As you've seen from this video, he was only given a fantasy suite, which was not on the main stage. I don't think he had an issue with that. And even Justin Timberlake got the same thing. He had his own fantasy suite. But then why does Justin Timberlake get a main stage performance and Kanye West doesn't? Later on, Kanye did an interview where he said, I've got a record like Stronger, which is blowing up all across the world, call it an audible. It's like, yo, let's let him take over the f***ing world the way we help Justin take over the world. Because at the end of the day, if Justin can charge like 2 million for a private event, partially it's because MTV helped make him the number one artist. Okay, now I'm working my f***ing ass off, yet you're gonna open the show with Britney and close with Justin? To me, you're saying, we don't want another Michael Jackson, we want Elvis. And that is the end of the 2007 MTV VMAs. Messy, messy, messy. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one, such as. Oh.